Hello everybody, Grace Seeker here and today we are going to install Slackware 14.2 using LVM on Lux. So to do that you first have to get the image from slackware.com, just go to download um, or get slack and save yourself and download it using torrent because the mirrors are a little bit confusing to find and a little bit E confusing to find the image too on the that is on the mirror. So after you have had it downloaded, run it to a USB and then plug it into your computer and launch. So mine is VirtualBox. So in order to make this screen a little bit bigger, I type huge dash it uh, dot s space vj seven seven three just to have a little bigger screen for you and there we go select your key map if you need a different key map and um, log in as root so the uh, system doesn't have any partitions this uh, hard disk and I am gonna partition this using GPT so I type gdisk dev sda okay as you can see there is nothing in here so it has created a new uh, GPT for me. So N for the first partition and the first one is going to be BIOS boot. And the size of that I don't think we need more than 32 megs. So it'll be it and the code for that will be EF02. The second partition is uh, the uh, boot partition and I am gonna assign 512 megabytes to it the default code and the third one is gonna be Linux LVM which has the rest of the disk and the code is 8E00 okay if we take a look at the changes we have made that's all we need so press W to write the changes to disk with a yes and the operation has completed successfully now it's time to encrypt our partition the SDA3 the third partition using crypt setup lux format and the cipher make sure to change the cipher because slackware uses a slightly less secure uh, cipher than uh, what we have discussed in the ubuntu section so you type aes xts lane 64 and sha 512 and separate hashing SHA-512 the size of 256 bits and uh, then specify the device you want to encrypt in this case dev sda3 so confirm by typing yes in uppercase letters and enter your passphrase make sure to enter a long and secure passphrase uh, for the sake of this installation I'm using a simple one now it's time to open it using crypt setup lux open dev sda3 and I am going to name the container vault 0 so open it, enter your passphrase and it is opened now we are going to create our LVs but first a physical volume is needed so pv create dev mapper vault 0 after that, create a volume group on top of that um, physical volume you just created by typing VG create, and the name of that volume um, um, group I am gonna name it Slack Dev Mapper Vault Zero. Now it's time to create our logical volumes. So the first one I'm gonna dedicate it to swap. So LB create dash C Y for continuous. Uh, logical volume and the size of 4 gigs name swap on volume group slack the second one is for the root dash c no dash l for the size 15 gigs and with the name root and uh, volume group slack the third one is for home and in that case a, a lowercase l and then 100 percent free dash n home and slack 
So if you type LD scan here, it shows us all the changes we have made and all the logical volumes we have created right now. Now it's time for um, uh, starting the installation. But first, let's activate the swap or format the swap so that the installer can recognize it. So mk swap dev slack swap and it is created. Now you need to um, type setup to start the installation. If you need to uh, view some help files, check this out. If you need to change your key map, check this. Uh, press enter on this to add your swap partition and it has automatically detected it because we have formatted it and it wants us to check uh, it asks us if you want to check it for bad blocks since this is a new hard disk I don't need to so no and it has activated it and added it to FS tab very good now it's time to choose the root partition and in our case at least it's a logical volume so we choose this and format it using extension 4 other partitions we need for this is boot partition of course so dev sda2 and format it as extension 2 with the mount point of boot third one is home so format it as xfs in this case and mount point is home so everything is in use as you can see the first one is our physical container so we don't need to do anything on that you, so you can just go continue and it will add all the information to the FS tab now it asks us the source of the installation which is a CD or DVD or perhaps you have a USB stick choose whatever um, um, whatever that is available for you in my case it's a CD and I will let it auto detect it So, uh, now it asks us what types of packages we want to install. For the sake of uh, com uh, comfort, the, and uh, when you want to install other packages that are not available in the repositories, make sure to select everything here. This part doesn't matter very much because it's additional languages. If you are not in the US, you can select this to add your local language later to the system but I am gonna go with the default selection here so okay and I am gonna go with full installation but if you need to choose some packages or remove some packages from the uh, installation go to menu and make your changes so full installation and it will now start installing packages one by one so I will wait a while and come back to you as soon as this is finished. Alright guys, so the installer is done. It now asks us if we want to have a separate USB stick for booting the system. But we don't need to, so we are gonna skip this part. And we are gonna install Lilo, which is the Linux bootloader simply and not expert right now. So a simple and a frame buffer of this, the last one, just to make it a little bit high quality. No kernel parameters right now and no UTF console. And the location of the bootloader is of course master boot record, but if you want to put it on the super block of the partition, make sure you activate it in the GDisk, activate that partition in GDisk, but in, if you have it on MBR, it is not needed. So it installs the bootloader and the, the mouse type, the default is usually the best. And this tells you that it will activate this GPM daemon so that in console you have a simple basic mouse just to copy and paste stuff if you need to. So yes, and configuring our network using hostname Slazly and um, the domain name is home.local for my case. If you want to use a desktop, put it on Network Manager because it will automatically, um, you know, connect to the network if you have a wired network. Or if you have a wireless network, you can easily select it from the menu right here. So put it on Network Manager if you're going to use desktop. If not, just put it on DHCP. It's easier. So, oops. Just 
selected the wrong one. No matter, I don't need the network right now. Select the services you want to have when starting your computer. Uh, it's simple enough for me. Good. And uh, no custom screen fonts. The hardware clock, I'm going to set it to UTC, but if you have Windows on your system, make sure it stays on local time. And choose your location. I am in Stockholm. So there it is. And your desktop, you want to boot it, boot the system to. Mine is XFCE right now, and put your root password. There it is. And press enter to continue, and it says now you can reboot your system. So you come to exit, and press enter, and press on no, so you will be dropped into a root shell. Now, if you type mount here, you'll see that the system, the default systems are still mounted. So, cd to mnt and change your root by typing root dot bin, oops, bin slash bash and then a dash l. Okay, now it's time for us to make an init ram, init ram fs or init rd so that the system can recognize the encrypted hard and encrypted partition and open it and mount the root file system um, from there. So in order to do that, let's take a look at boot partition to see what kernels we have. We have a generic 4.4.14. So type make mk init rd dash c to erase the current init from fs3 dash k and that is the kernel version 4.4.14 and then the modules to load at boot time we have an extension for root file system so we're gonna we are going to do that dash f for the file system of root you have to tell it extension 4 and the dash r is the um, root uh, directory or root uh, root partition which is dev slack root dash c and here you can you should specify the encrypted partition which is dev sda3 dash l for lvm and um, yeah I think we are done here so just press enter and it will create the mknit rd for you and put it on boot directory so ls here or uh, cd into boot and ls, you see that the init rd is oops, the init rd is there. Now it's time to configure our bootloader. So in order to do that, do that. Um, type vim or nano, whichever editor you are more comfortable with, and etsy lilo.conf and scroll down. Here, you, in order to skip the BIOS data check, uncomment this. It will make your boot a lot faster on some systems. And 773 is the way for me. Okay, here it has automatically selected the kernel, but make sure to add a generic at the end of that so that you boot the generic kernel. And a new line, two spaces, and init rd equals boot init rd.gz to introduce the init rd and label you can change the label of the operating system I'm gonna put it on slackware and that is all the change we need to make so save and exit and type lila okay it has added the um, slackware entry these warnings can safely be ignored so in order to exit the root system, type exit, type cd, and unmount everything that is under mnt to sync any buffers to disk. And now you can restart your system. So reboot. Make sure to exit the DVD or USB. 
or eject the CD or USB and it will now uh, restart the system for us and there it is Slackware entry press enter the system is now booting and now asks for the password of the container type the password and it will automatically name it for us to SDA3 LUX or LUX SDA3 and here is your system guys so have fun with your new Slackware system notice that there was no need for a crypt tab file because the init rd is smart enough to include that in itself so yeah I hope you enjoyed it please comment like and subscribe and I will see you soon in other videos